Question number 10. Yes, Minister, my question is relating to why a badger cull? Why are you tendering for 25,000 units of biological material, which is essentially body bags for badgers, when your department has given a commitment to rolling out a vaccination programme for in this particular project? First of all, can, thanks for asking this question because I know this is this is an issue that you're concerned about, and, um, and I want to give you a, a detailed answer on it. The wildlife policy, which is a, a component of my department's TB eradication program, has been developed uh, in response to research which has demonstrated that the eradication of the disease uh, is not a practical position until the reservoir of infections in badgers is addressed. Capturing of badgers takes place in areas where serious outbreaks of, t uh, of TB have been identified in cattle herds and where department vets have found following an epidemiological examination that badgers are the likely source of infection. Approximately 6,000 badgers are culled annually uh, by trained contractors under licence and the process is monitored and supervised by department oh staff. In, tan in tandem uh, with the Badger Removal Programme, my department continues to sponsor research and trials into uh, developing a vaccination programme to control tuberculosis in badgers, thus uh, improving the overall health status of that species uh, and uh, to break uh, the infection link with cattle. The research to date has demonstrated that the oral vaccination of badgers in a captive environment uh, with uh, BCG vaccine generates high levels uh, of protective immunity against bovine TB. Current r research is aimed at confirming that such uh, 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 a protective effect holds true in wild populations. My department's ultimate, ultimate objective is to incorporate badger vaccination into the TB eradication program when data is available to ensure that it can be incorporated in an optimal, uh, uh, in an optimal effective and sustainable manner. A number of field trials are ongoing with this objective in mind, but it is anticipated that it will be a number of years yet before a, a viable oral delivery method can be put in place and therefore targeted badger removal will, will, will continue in the medium term in the interests of ensuring uh, that the progress achieved in recent years in combating TB, both in cattle and in badgers, uh, is actually maintained. Thank you, Minister. Deputy O'Sullivan. Right. That's a most unfortunate answer because what we're talking about in a badger cull is a most inhumane, cruel and barbaric way of dealing with the situation of bovine TB when, first of all, it's not 100% proven that the badger is totally responsible for bovine TB and where there are doubts over some of the experiments that have so-called proven this. And secondly, reduction in TB in cattle can also be linked to improved husbandry and other factors, not especially through the, the badger cull. So why this urgency to kill th thousands of an ecologically important species, the badger? Um, I just referred to a, a glitch that happened in the Department of Agriculture in England, whereby an IT glitch, as they said, meant that it had overstated the number of cattle herds infected by TB in Britain to such an extent that really the decline in, in TB had been in the year preceding the badger cull. Um, I suppose I'd also like to make the point that it's a particularly cruel way, this badger cull, but there's also illegal ways of killing badgers. And there are horrible practices going on, including putting slurry in badger sets, including throwing the carcasses of badgers out onto the road Definitely. to give the impression that they have been killed in road accidents. Um, these are the things that are, that are going on to a, a population of badgers that we don't know are 100% responsible for bovine TB. Thank you, Deputy Minister. Okay, well, well, first of all, I don't condone or in any way support um, um, the illegal killing of badgers in, in a way that is not licensed and controlled and monitored by my department. Uh, and I, I would share your views on that. Uh, I think it's also important to say that, that um, uh, culling badgers is only a part of a TB programme that has been extraordinarily successful in Ireland. We have less TB in Ireland now than at any time since 1953 when records began. The UK cannot say the same. If anything, uh, uh, they have a, a, an increasing problem with TB in herds, uh, depending on the region that you look at. So we, the system that we have in place at the moment is working. We're targeting areas where there are significant TB outbreaks, where, where we have reason to believe that there's a link with a wildlife infection with, with badgers. We target those areas. This isn't some kind of you know, indiscriminate uh, culling of badgers right across the country. It, it is a targeted effort 
to try and, and catch and put down badgers that we believe may have TB themselves and are spreading TB into cattle. Thank you, Mr. And it has been a part of a very, very effective um, uh, TB programme that is reducing TB dramatically in Ireland and is saving the, the taxpayer a lot of money. Thank as you. soon as we can introduce a vaccination programme to, to target TB in badgers, uh, that is credible and that can take the place of the targeted culling program, we will do it. And I will enthusiastically uh, introduce that if and when it happens. But I'm not going to do something Thank that's you, going Mr. to undermine the efforts that we've put in place over the last Thank number of decades. Just, just time for one brief. There have been very recent reports which have shown that injecting the badgers uh, significantly reduces the progress and the severity of TB. And unlike culling, vaccination doesn't disrupt the badger social group and it provides immunity indirectly to unvaccinated badger cubs. And that was an experiment done where one third of the badger population was injected and it immediately spread to the rest of the badger population. The more, a more recent one also in, I think, in England has shown that more rigorous testing of cattle and vaccination of cattle is also a way forward. But my point to you now, finally, is that there should be an urgency on the vaccination programme. Um, rather than just using the cull because we've had it in place for so long, we need to look seriously and urgently at a vaccination programme. And that's what I'm asking. Minister, final reply. Can I reassure you, Deputy, only last week I asked my Secretary-General to look at this issue to try and fast-track a, 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 a vaccination programme for badgers, if we can do it credibly. But I am not going to undermine the efforts that we have made over many, many years un, until we're sure that we can do that um, a, a, in a way that, that keeps the positive momentum in the TB um, a programme that we have, which has been extraordinarily successful. We ultimately want to eradicate TB out of Ireland, in badger populations and in cattle populations. For the record, there is not a problem in terms of badger numbers in Ireland. This isn't, this isn't compromising badger numbers. We have a, a, a healthy uh, badger population across the country as we speak. I accept that the preference is to vaccinate rather than kill badgers, if we can do that effectively. But, but, but ultimately, ultimately, please, ultimately please. Well, if, you were, if you were listening... Stop. Stop. Minister, if you were listening earlier, Minister. Deputy, which I doubt you were, I explained the trials that we're running at the moment, which are actually showing pretty credible results in this area. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. That concludes question time. Order, order please. Order. Shh. Wow.